Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with a special video. Uh, so AWS reInvent kicked off yesterday and today Andy Jesse gave his keynote. It was filled with a bunch of announcements. Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna go over the serverless container and DevOps announcements, especially the key ones. We are also gonna do one of those announcements uh, with hands-on. Uh, as always, I've given timestamps uh, in the video. Uh, all right, let's get started. Uh, so starting with container, uh, the biggest announcement to me was uh, able to run EKS or ECS on-prem. Uh, so he termed it as EKS Anywhere or ECS Anywhere. Uh, however, it is coming in 2021, uh, but for the time being, uh, AWS is making the EKS as open source. So if you want, you can get the open source, download it in your on-prem servers and run EKS. Uh, but the managed version for the EKS Anywhere for your on-prem Kubernetes is coming uh, 2021. Same for ECS Anywhere as well. So now moving on to the Lambda announcements. Uh, so there are a couple of big ones. Uh, number one is now Lambda will be built per millisecond down from 100 milliseconds. So uh, uh, before, if your Lambda run for like three milliseconds, you will still get charged for 100 milliseconds, right? Because the billing unit was 100 millisecond. Uh, but now if your Lambda runs three milliseconds, uh, you will only pay for those three milliseconds. So basically, uh, whatever was getting charged before for 100 millisecond, you divide it by 100, that's the charge for uh, one millisecond, and then you pay uh, based on that. Secondly, uh, this, Andy Jesse actually did not mention this one in uh, the keynote, uh, but on the release notes, AWS actually released it. So I saw it there. This one is, is pretty powerful as well. Uh, so previously, your Lambda function can have maximum three gigabyte of memory uh, and the maximum amount of CPU cores under the hood you could have is two. But now it is increased from three gigabyte to 10 gigabyte and the number of cores you can have is six. Uh, I don't think at what memory you get, what number of cores is uh, out yet in the documentation. So I'll keep an eye out for that. So actually, uh, if you jump into your AWS console, go to the Lambda console, and then um, if I scroll down to the configuration, the basic setting, uh, click edit. Uh, so before the max you could set here is uh, three gigabytes, so 3048 megabyte, but now you can see you can allocate up to 10,240 uh, megabyte or 10 gigabyte of memory. Uh, so this is pretty cool. This opens up lots of possibilities, especially uh, with new AVX2 announcements, which came before reInvent. Um, this, if you are running machine learning based workload or some high memory workload or high CPU workload, uh, now you can uh, use Lambda uh, for those workloads. So I actually found this in uh, this uh, reInvent blog uh, where they list all the announcements. Uh, so that's how I know, even though Andy Jesse did not mention it, it, it got released and then I, then I tested it in the console. Uh, so the next big announcement, this one is both container and serverless, is a container image support for Lambda. So just to be clear, this might create some confusion. Uh, this is not like Google Cloud Run or Knative. This is not like, oh, you have your Lambda code, and then you put it on EKS and your Lambda code is running as container on EKS or ECS. Uh, so this is not like that. So what this is, is when you run a Lambda under the hood, AWS uh, spins up a container and the base image of the container AWS provides, right? Like if you are using Boto3 or some other library, AWS packages all that and gives you the container. And if you need external libraries, uh, you have to install it and create a package with other external dependencies. Now what this is, is instead of AWS giving you the base container and then you install the code on top and stuff, you provide the container image. Uh, so let's say your, your code 
uh, maybe you need to run in uh, Linux 2 or something, and then you have a bunch of external libraries and other dependencies, you can put all those in, uh, create a container image, put that container image in ECR, right? And then you can run that container image as Lambda. So when the Lambda gets invoked, the Lambda will pull the image from ECR instead of uh, AWS provided a standard image, and then it will run. So this is pretty powerful. Uh, so number one, if you are using container-based development, like uh, if you already containerized your app, uh, so you can now run those apps in as Lambda uh, using Lambda function. And secondly, uh, you can pick and choose. So uh, the, maybe the standard container that comes with Lambda has a bunch of stuff that you don't need. Uh, since now you create the image for the Lambda, uh, you can make it really streamlined what you need and really fast. Uh, similarly, don't load a bunch of stuff uh, that you don't need. So I'm actually going to do a hands-on on this on a separate video because this has lots of steps. So I didn't want to put this in this video. Uh, but this week, uh, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I'm going to do a separate video on that. So this is a big one. Uh, so now moving on to DevOps. So the thing I like about uh, the DevOps announcements is uh, it's not in vacuum. So it's very, very correlated with serverless and container. Uh, so the one announcement is DevOps Guru, uh, which identifies application errors and fixes. So I have not done it hands-on because this just came out today. Uh, so a lot of companies are trying to do this uh, thing as, hey, if I get a particular error, uh, can I run machine learning and identify the root cause of the error? So if you have let's say uh, your API gateway, Lambda, bunch of databases, etc. And you got an error and you want to determine the severity of the error or find the root cause. Uh, so sometimes your engineers have to dig a lot. So apparently this Amazon DevOps guru will help you identify the application errors and fixes. Uh, so let's say uh, for some reason your Lambda throttled, right? Or uh, it has some anomalies in API Gateway, like based on the duration or something. Uh, so this DevOps guru can uh, go check out your metrics, DevOps pipeline, and bunch of other logs and identify exactly which component uh, caused the error and what could be the fix. Uh, so look out, I'm gonna do a separate uh, hands-on video on this one as well. Okay, and the last DevOps announcements uh, that I really liked is AWS Proton. Uh, so today, if you are deploying uh, serverless applications or container applications as microservices, uh, you have to manage the uh, deployment, right? So if you're using Code Pipeline or Jenkins, and let's say you have hundreds of microservices and maybe two microservices are dependent on each other or some other external libraries, you have to build all that in your DevOps tool chain, right? So if one changed, maybe you have to change the other ones. And then if you are building like thousands of microservices, you have to do all that yourself. So AWS Proton uh, creates a deployment pipeline uh, for your container and serverless microservices. And it, and it does some checks and enforces some consistent standards. Uh, so again, I did not dive deep into this. I want to, so keep an eye out as well for this one. So I'm just looking at the product page. Uh, it says managing hundreds or thousands of microservices. You can set guardrail, um, developer productivity, and enforce best practices. So this looks a little bit similar to AWS CodeStar which can deploy a bunch of different applications, kind of gives you the CI CD for it. So um, I don't know how it is different, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick the tire on this uh, because CodeStar also had similar use cases, but I did not get much traction. Okay, so these are the container serverless and the DevOps announcements. Other than that, there is one more announcement which was 
database but also touched on serverless uh, so we have this serverless aurora serverless uh, where you can uh, spin up a database uh, but you know database you have to say how much cpu how much memory how much uh, storage all that stuff and even if you are not using all the cpu storage you have to pay for it right because it's like ec2 uh, but aurora serverless uh, you pay whatever you use so if your database is one gigabyte you only pay for that as traffic comes in or more data comes in uh, the cpu increases the storage increases then it automatically scales up that's the concept and then you pay for it uh, during the time it's, it's scaled up and then if it scales down you pay less uh, so now aws announced aurora serverless v2 so even there's database it's kind of on the serverless area uh, other than that, there were a bunch of announcements on AI, ML, and database. Uh, so let me know if you want me to cover those. Um, I am a little biased towards serverless and container and DevOps. Uh, so I'm probably going to do all the announcements hands-on uh, over the coming couple days. Uh, but let me know if you are interested in some specific announcements. I'll give the link to all the announcements below. There's a ton. Uh, and, then, and then I can do hands-on on this. Uh, but that's it. If you like this video, if you found this video useful, uh, please give it a like, uh, do the subscribe, uh, put something in the comment, right? That really helps YouTube algorithm and that helps this channel grow. Uh, all right, with that, I'll see you guys and girls uh, in the next video. Bye.